everyone. I'm so glad you can join us in services today, wherever you are at. I'm Megan Davenport, and I serve wherever I can here at The Bridge. I miss all of you so much. We are a church that exists to be a bridge to freedom, purpose, and fulfillment in Christ. I can't wait for all of this to be over and we're able to see each other again, hang out and do game nights, and well, just be together. Today, as we join together in houses across the world, don't be ashamed to sing with me, love on each other, and just worship our God together. I hope you enjoy the worship and message today. Don't forget, be a bridge. Hey, good morning, Bridge Church. We're so glad to be with you in worship this morning in your homes, wherever you're at. And I just pray that you guys are just going to enjoy this service as much as we've enjoyed preparing it for you. So. Sing this with us. I search the world. I search the world. But it couldn't feel me. The man's empty praise and treasures of pain are never enough. Then you came, then you came along and put me back together. Every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Sing that out, oh, there's nothing. Oh, there's nothing.
Chris Davenport. I get to be the pastor here. And so this will be the moment where we fill out those connect cards. And so what the link should be pinned at the top on the on the Facebook live. And uh, you just fill that out. Uh, if you're a guest this morning, we'll send you a, a mug and a gift with that. Um, and if you're not a guest, um, it's, it's an opportunity for us to donate to a nonprofit. Um, this is also the time that we celebrate God with our giving. And we give because it is Christ that first gave to us. And this is a normal practice uh, for those that call the Bridge Church home. And so I just want to say thank you so much to your generosity. It means so much to us and we get to impact the community that way. And we have a faithful church that not only um, gives with their time, um, but they also give with their talents. 
And so some of you are strong encouragers. And this week, um, my wife, Megan, she was working in the COVID unit. Uh, thank you for praying for her, by the way. But when she was in the break room, y'all get this, those letters that y'all had written to the hospital, it was there and it was pinned on their board uh, with our business card or with our card that's on there. And so y'all are just giving encouragement to that entire hospital, especially that section that is, is dealing with COVID-19. And so again, man, I just want to say thank you so much for being so generous and giving your time and your talent and your treasure to the Lord. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for this day. Oh God, thank you so much for everything that you have done for us. Lord, I just, we're, so, we're so thankful because you're so faithful. God, I pray over this so service, Lord. God, I pray um, that you will just impact and, and change our heart, hearts and mold our hearts to look more and more like you. God, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you for your love for us, God, and just the price that you've paid for us, God. And as we just go into this next song, God, and just worship you and this hymn, God, we just pray, Lord, that you'll just, just remind us what it is that you did for us on the cross and just help us to ponder on that. And we love you, Lord. week and just trying to think of the songs to do and everything. Our awesome drummer back here, Matt Slagle, keeps on saying, hey, let's let's just do Jesus Paid It All. I'm like, oh, all right, let's do it. We'll just go ahead and do it. And so there was a sermon that I was listening to and just just made this even just stick even more so. And so John MacArthur says this thing. He says in his sermon, he says, one thing is clear from what Farrar said is that we know about the career crucifixion. He's talking about the crucifixion here. He says that in crucifying someone, no one was concerned with a quick and painless death. No one was concerned with the preservation of any measure of human dignity. 
Rather, it was quite the opposite. Crucifier sought an agonizing torture of complete humiliation that exceeds any other design for death that man has ever invented. And such was a torture that our Lord Jesus Christ endured for us. And he knew it awful well. And the amazing part about this crucifixion of our Christ is that we know that through him, that was the climax of redemptive history. And this song that we sing about how Jesus paid it all, just, I don't think it can capture really what was, con what was conquered through Christ on the cross. And we can never know to full too well what that suffering and what that agony was. But I do know the one who paid my debt. And I do know the one who bore the suffering for me. And so we sing this song that we sing. Lord, praise the one who paid my debt and raised his life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised his life up from the dead. Oh, We're so glad that you could join us for services today. My name is Karisha Prokep, and I get to be the leader of the hospitality team here at the Bridge Church. So to join our team or serve in any aspect of our church, or if you're a guest of the Bridge Church, we invite you to text the word CONNECT to the number below. You'll receive a free gift as our way of saying thank you. If you're a regular attender, you can also text the word CONNECT to the same number, and that will help us to make a donation to Mental Health America of Fredericksburg. This organization helps uninsured elderly and anyone seeking guidance for mental health issues. Finally, if you're a regular attender at the Bridge Church and consider the Bridge Church your home, we want to say thank you for your generosity and your giving. You can continue to give to God through your finances by going to thebridgefxbg.org or texting GIVE to the number below. We're so excited to have you with us today. Now here's Pastor Chris with the message. to the bridge church y'all that worship was phenomenal let's go man i love worshiping on sunday sundays are awesome for me just this opportunity uh that i get a chance to preach god's word like i love doing this um this week or this past week i guess uh, i learned something new uh something new uh I i've never heard this before but did you know there are two truths there are two truths did you know that like be honest with me right now put in the comments right now if, if you knew that there are two truths one truth is called absolute truth and another truth is called subjective truth absolute truth is truth that is never changing it's it's truth is true no matter if you like it or not 
is true for all people, all places, and all times. So let me give you an example. Two plus two is what? Five. No, I'm just kidding. Four, right? Angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. All humans have 45 chromosomes. Some of you probably didn't know that. I didn't know that. I just found that out. But that's absolute truth. And then there's subjective truth. It's relative. It's, it's what is true for me, but not true for others. So an example is um, Fruity Pebbles is the best cereal in the entire world. I like Fruity Pebbles, right? But that doesn't mean that you like Fruity Pebbles. So that statement may not be true for you. Um, our culture will try to, to, to do this, make subjective truth an absolute truth, which is you trying to base, base truth on what you feel is true. For example, like, like changing your age. Like maybe you wake up in the morning and you feeling so good. Like I'm 30 and I wake up, I feel so good. I'm saying, man, I'm, I'm 22 today. Like that can't happen. Like that, that's not true. And so when you try to make relative truth or subjective truth an absolute truth, it causes confusion. And you can struggle to believe what is really true or false. Well, in 1 John uh, chapter 5, there became some confusion on what was really true. They began to question if they truly were Christians, if they truly had a relationship with Christ, if, if they were truly believers. So John writes so that they can have assurance that they are really saved. And so if you would turn your Bibles to 1 John chapter 5. Um, you can find 1 John chapter 5 if, if you have uh, never went through the Bible before, never really navigated through the Bible before. Um, there's a table content section that's at the beginning. And there's an Old Testament and there's a New Testament. You'll be able to find 1 John chapter 5 um, in the New Testament. The words are going to appear here on the screen for you. Um, if you do not own a Bible please reach out to us. You can message me on Facebook. You can message the Bridge Church on Facebook. We would love to send you a Bible. But let's look at 1 John chapter 5 and let's see what God's word says about how we can know that we are saved. And so your big idea this morning is what makes you so sure? I want you to write that down, journal that, put that in the comments, like what makes you so sure? So we're going to start out with 1 John chapter 5, starting in verse 6. Here we go. This is the one who came from or came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only but by water and blood. And it is the spirit who testifies because the spirit is truth. For there are three that testify the spirit, the water and the blood. And the three are in agreement. We accept human testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God, which he has given about his son. So let me explain this, this water and blood. I know some of you may be, be kind of confused. Um, water and blood offer us two external examples of who Jesus Christ is. And so water means Jesus's baptism. What John is doing is he's pointing these believers back to when Jesus was baptized. And we can see that in the gospel of Matthew chapter three, verse 16. And, and I, I'll maybe, maybe close your eyes, but I I want you to dwell on or think about what is happening here in this in this verse or in this passage like it's so marvelous it's so majestic it's so beautiful to see I want you to look at this as soon as Jesus was baptized he went up out of the water at that moment heaven was opened and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him and a voice from heaven said this, this is my son whom I love and with him 
I am well pleased. Like that's so beautiful to see that when when Jesus raises up out of that water, the the heavens open up and God begins to speak. It's um, it's it's reaffirming what John is saying in verse six when he says, um, and it is the spirit who testifies. So the spirit came down like a dove. He was there during that time. And then also it's talking about God's testimony that we see in verse nine when he says we accept human testimony, but it was God's testimony testimony that is greater. And so this is so important for us to see this because it's saying the Trinity was together then. Like there is one God and three persons always existed, never been created, but created everything that God, the father, God, the Holy Spirit is there in that moment vouching for Jesus making sure that everyone that is there at that scene knows that Jesus is God, that it is God in the flesh dwelling with them, that these people become witnesses of what is happening. This isn't saying that baptism saves you because God doesn't need saving, but it's a symbolism that something is about to get started, which is Jesus's ministry. Side note, let me say this Um, for those who are Christians and you haven't been baptized. You should be. That this is the first sign of obedience to Christ. And so it doesn't it doesn't matter how afraid you are. Like it doesn't matter how many people are watching that it's showing the church that you're a Christian, that you are a believer, that you are a follower of Christ. When Jesus was baptized, it was an anticipation of what he was going to do. It announces to all the world that we are identifying ourselves publicly with the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. And so you may say, well, well, I was baptized when I was a baby. Does that count? The answer is no. It isn't until you make that public declaration and can understand and believe and receive that Jesus is your Lord or that Jesus um, runs your life, that you have given your life to Christ. And that is when and why you should be baptized. Water equaling Jesus baptism says this. He was speaking into existence what was soon to happen to him. Pastor Rob Morgan, the teaching pastor at the Donaldson Fellowship in Nashville, Tennessee, says this about Jesus's baptism. That um, when Jesus was baptized, he was saying, I am about to be plunged into a vat of anguish and suffering such as the world has has never seen. I'm about to undergo a level of pain that exceeds human endurance. It is that the real baptism took place on the cross and in the empty tomb, that this baptism is synonymous with the suffering and passion of Christ. So when someone says, I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose from the grave, when that person receives this free gift of eternal life, we outwardly communicate this internal decision when we stand vertically in water to be lowered into the watery tomb and resurrected out of it. That it is a reenactment of the death, burial and resurrection of Christ. That's what the blood, that's what the water means here. The blood means Jesus death, that Jesus died so that we can have eternal life that comes from him. So this is what it means when it says Jesus came by water and by blood and that the spirit testifies because he was there and that God testifies because he was there. Verse 10, whoever believes in the son of God accepts this testimony, the testimony that God gave on that day. Whoever does not believe God has made him out to be a liar because they have not believed the testimony God has given 
about his son. So when someone denies this, some, this, this um, testimony or someone doesn't believe this, this testimony is not saying that, that people that are sharing the gospel are liars, but really they're, they're calling God a liar. This is why like, I, I love sharing the gospel. I, I don't get nervous anymore anymore get nervous anymore like because um they're not saying no to me in reality people are saying no to god verse 11 and this is the testimony god has given us eternal life and this life is in his son whoever has the son has life again i don't care what your past looks like i don't care what you've done. But scripture says, whoever has the son, they have eternal life. They have life. And it says, whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the son of God so that you may know. That's the theme of all of this. So that we can know, underline no, circle no, type no in the comments who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. Number one, our salvation is assured by faith in the Son of God. That's how we can know that we're saved. That our salvation is assured by faith in the Son of God. It's not what we feel, but it's what God says. And he says, whoever has the Son has life. When I first gave, or when I gave my life to Christ and I started a relationship with Jesus, I still felt like I wasn't sure if I was going to heaven or not. As if my salvation wasn't based or as if my salvation wasn't based off of my faith in Jesus. So I still like question a lot. And so I can remember every Sunday I would always find myself starting a relationship with Christ, giving uh, my life to Christ in every message that was preached. Because I just wanted to make sure, like just in case, if God didn't hear me this time, uh, hopefully he hears me now. Like I always wanted to make sure that I was saved. Um, I even found myself getting baptized again just to make sure. But I want you to know this. Being saved, it isn't the matter of whether we feel saved. Like it's not based on if we feel saved or not. It isn't the matter of knowing the day or the time you gave your life to Christ. Like sometimes people will ask, hey, when was the day and time that you gave your life to Christ? And, and if you don't know, like that's okay. Because I don't remember the day that I was born, but I'm still here, but I'm here, right? And so maybe you don't know the day or time or the hour when you gave your life to Christ. Like it it, it isn't the matter of how many times you were baptized or if your entire body was submerged underwater. It isn't upon your giving. Like how awesome is that? that? That we're not saved because of how much we give. It isn't how many times you've been to church. Like you're not saved by how many times you showed up at the Bridge Church or you watched online this week. But hey, still continue to watch online though, seriously. (laughs) It isn't living a good life. But here's the absolute truth. That if we believe there is a God, then we believe he's the creator of all. And that means I can trust in everything he says. And he says this, whoever has The son has life. Y'all, we know this title of son. We've been talking about this title of the son, but we underestimate its meaning. That the son and father terminology wasn't just used to display lineage, but also characteristics. The Nicene Creed, this was a creed that was created a long time ago. Um, um, from a church, they create this creed because going around there are people or there was a, one person um, that was spreading lies about the, the Trinity, about who God is. They were saying like there were many gods, like uh, there are so many gods. And so the, the church creates this creed so that people can continue to know, like, what does it mean when Jesus says that he is the son of God? And so I want to read this to you because this, I think this is awesome. It says, and in one talking about Jesus. And in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, begotten from the Father before all ages, 
Man, he's face to face with the Father before the earth or anything had ever been created that he was never created. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of the same essence of the Father. And get this, through him, Jesus, all things were made. Everything on this earth was made by Jesus. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. He became incarnate by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made human. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again, according to the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated on the right hand of the Father. He will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will never end. Jesus being the son doesn't make him less dead than the father and that if you truly believe this that Jesus is God you will have life and I want you to know that it's not just knowing about Jesus like living in America like it seems like everyone knows about Jesus that it's not just knowing about him but it's knowing him it's having a relationship with him, truly having a relationship with him. And so living in America, right, like like everyone can claim that they're Christian. Everyone can claim that they're a believer. Everyone can can say that they are a follower of Christ. I mean, even on our dollar bills is printed in God we trust. But that's not true for everyone. It's possible even for us to have false assurance. Like you may think you're saved, but you're not. In fact, let's look at this in Matthew, the gospel of Matthew, chapter seven, verse 21 um, through 23. And I, I really want you to look at this and I want you to pay attention to this because um, there may be some that are watching on this live stream right now that may have false assurances. So I want you to I want you to get this like like zone in in this. Not everyone who says to me, this is Jesus speaking, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of God. Of heaven. So he's saying like not everyone that says that I'm a Christian, not everyone that says I'm a believer, not everyone that says that I'm a follower of Christ will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but only the ones who does the will of my father who is in heaven. He's saying like your, your actions will show if you have a relationship with with Christ or not. By the way that you live, if you're living under God's will, the Father's will, it will show if you are a Christian or not. And then look at verse 22, because this, this is powerful and impactful. Many will say to me on that day, judgment day, Lord, Lord, do we not prophesy in your name? And in your name, drive out demons. And in your name, perform many miracles. Basically saying, I did a lot of good works. Like I worked so hard, like I did that. In verse 23, it says, Jesus says, I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. That he's gonna tell them plainly that he had never knew them. So it's not based upon your works. It's really based upon if you truly have a relationship with Christ, that Jesus isn't your genie, that Jesus isn't your vending machine. Jesus isn't your wishing well. We don't just go to him when we need something. Our relationship is what matters. Like, do you have a relationship with the Lord? Like it should be better than a relationship that you have with your friends. Like it should be even greater than a relationship that you have with your spouse. Your relationship with the Lord matters. Our salvation is centered around Christ and Christ alone and not our works. And so my question to you today is this. Do you truly have a relationship with Jesus? What does that look like in your life? Because it's not by works. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 says, For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Your salvation is centered around who Jesus is. Number two, 
our salvation is shown. How do we know that we're saved? Like, what does that assurance looks like? It's our salvation is shown. Verse 14. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask according uh, to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. How awesome is it that we just have this amazing opportunity to even go to God through prayer? And with our problems and not just our problems, but even when things are going well, that that we get to go to him in prayer. Our salvation is shown by the way God answers. Number one, God answers our prayers that God will shape and mold our heart to desire the things that that he desires. And we begin to pray for those things is that God listens to the prayers of his children The Gospel of John, chapter 9, verse 31 says, we know that God does not listen to sinners. Wow, how crazy is that? That God doesn't listen to sinners. He listens to the godly person who does his will, his children. You can be assured of your salvation through answered prayer. Just this last week, um, I received a visit uh, from someone um, um, uh, who told me that some time ago uh, that her her boss had had given them a bonus, and um, so so being kind hearted, she was like, "I'm I'm going to give a um, hundred dollars uh, to my mom." And so she goes over there some time ago, gives that hundred dollars to her mom, and then uh, a year later, this person is attending the Bridge Church, and then of course the coronavirus hits, and now everyone's watching it online. She's watching it online, and um, it came to the it came to the part where we we celebrate God through our giving, and and they begin to say, "Man, Lord, I don't I don't really have anything to give, like I don't I don't, I don't have any money to give." And they're praying to him about it. And y'all listen to this. That person visits their mom. And their mom gives them this card that they had given them. And in that card, it had that $100 still left inside. Like she didn't ask her mom for that money. Like uh, God provided that same $100 bill that she gave to her mom a year ago to be able to give To the Lord, God answered their prayer, which assured them that they do have a relationship with Christ, that there is open communication and her salvation was shown. Verse 16, if you see any brother or sister commit a sin that does not lead to death, you should pray and God will give them life. I refer to those who sin does not lead to death. There is a sin that leads to death. And I'm not saying that you should pray about that. All wrongdoing is sin. And there is sin that does not lead to death. Isn't that kind of strange reading that? That Because uh, I've always thought that all sin leads to death. But it, here it's saying like there is some sin that leads to death. And then there is a sin that, that doesn't lead to death. That could be super confusing. John is proclaiming this. We all sin and that there's no one righteous, not even one. There's there's no one that is perfect. But the sin that leads to death is this. When you sin, you don't have that true and genuine relationship with Christ. Your sins are not forgiven. That when you meet in front of the father, Jesus doesn't vouch for you. He will say, depart from me. I never knew you. You're judged on your own works. You're judged on your own merits, which will lead you to death and destruction. Your perspective on life, it doesn't change. You live a life that only satisfies yourself. You defy the Lord. You can care less about his desires. That sin that leads to death. Verse 18, we know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin. The one who was born of God keeps them safe and the evil one cannot harm them. How awesome is that? That when you have a relationship with Christ, God protects you. God becomes your shield from the evil one. 
We know that we are children of God and the whole world is under the control of the evil one. When we have a relationship with Christ, our perspective on life, number two, changes. That you live a life that pleases God. That you desire to please God. And it's only because of the Holy Spirit that is transforming you to look more and more like Jesus. Because you have received God's grace. We know all that the Son of God has come. And has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true by being in his son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Dear children, keep yourselves from idols. Only worship God and God alone. That he should be the priority in your life. So what does that look like for you? Maybe you're here tuning in and you're saying, man, I don't, I thought I had a relationship with Christ. Now, as I'm listening, maybe I'm, I'm, I, I don't. So if that's you today. And, and you don't have a relationship with Christ. You can start it. Here and now. If that's you that you don't know Christ, you don't have a relationship with Him, just put follow in the comments. It's a way for us to connect with you, reach out to you, and to help you understand even more so what Jesus has done for you. Romans 10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you can be saved and that can happen today. And if you have a relationship with Christ, hey, let's continue with living in God's will. Like we're continue to care for our neighbors, continue to love on our neighbors. And you're assured today that you have a relationship with Christ, that you have believed and received who Jesus is. And he's the savior of your life and your salvation is shown. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this day. God, thank you so much for everything that you've done for our life. God, that there are, if there are people that are watching on this live stream that, that are not Christian, that they, they don't have a relationship with you, God, I pray that you will pierce their hearts this morning. That they won't leave here. They won't log off until they start a relationship with you. Because I find joy that when I see you, I'll get to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant instead of depart from me I never knew you so if that's you today that's not a Christian you don't have a relationship with Christ you type follow in the comments if that's you today and you're like I want to give my life to Christ it looks something like this you, you pray something like this God I'm a sinner and today I've heard that you have died on the cross and rose from the grave to pay for my sins. And I believe in that. And so here and now, I want to receive you as the Lord of my life. Here and now, I want to re receive you as the Savior of my world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Praise the Lord. Hey, if that was you that typed follow in the comments, if that was you that, that prayed today, man, congratulations. Hey, welcome to the family. 
I'm so proud of you. That's awesome. That's awesome. And reach out to us so that we can connect with you. Fill out those connect cards so that we can connect with you too. I'm also, connect groups start this week. What connect group are you in? Are you in a, a, a marital connect group? Or are you in a co-ed connect group? Like type in the comments, what connect group did you decide to join? They all will be hosted uh, via Zoom link. And so you'll just meet your connect group leader, get to know them. It's going to be an awesome time. So join those connect groups so we can continue to grow in the Lord. Thank you so much for worshiping with us. Uh, be a bridge. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised his life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised his life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised his life up from the dead. Wow, what a powerful service. If you made a first time decision to follow Christ today, we wanna to invite you to text follow to the number below. If that's you, we wanna say congratulations and we wanna be with you every step of the way through this journey in whatever capacity we can. If you wanna partner with us in ministry through giving, go online to thebridgefxbg.org. Once again, thank you so much for being with us in service and remember, always be a bridge.